Hello and welcome to my video on what I feed my koi as a treat. So the treats that I give them. So what I'm going to do here is, well I've got a few treats lined up here, um, stuff that I feed them. And I'm going to start with an orange. Oranges are something I like to give them, I'd say once a week. I give, they get oranges once a week. Um, you know, good, good source of vitamins and all that sort of stuff. And the fish like them. If you put oranges in your tank, you'll find that the first two or maybe three oranges that you put in will not get eaten. Um, they only want to be in like two days, something like that. And then after that point, they start to eat them. And they, will, they don't last very long at all. I can put, I'll probably put this uh, orange in now and it'll probably last an hour or two. Uh, even though the water's starting to cool down. Then all I literally do is cut it in half and then drop it in. Like that, and literally, maybe a look straight on it. And uh, that's it, just leave them floating about. When, see, I cut them in half like that and they initially float, so now they're floating. But when the fish have eaten them, the camera shy, when the fish have eaten them, they will sink to the bottom, so that's something you've got to. Uh, uh, Got to pay attention to them. Maybe if they're, if they're almost finished with them, just take them out if you can grab hold of them. Or if they float to the bottom, then you've got to net them and make sure they don't go in your bottom drains or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the thing to pay attention to. But I do like oranges. The fish like them. It gives them something to do for a bit. And another thing I also like to do is, um, if you most of my videos, you will notice that uh, there's a cabbage in the water. Funny enough today there isn't a cabbage in the water, but I took it out yesterday, that's why it looks a bit minging, but the, uh, that's what's remained of a cabbage that we're in for about three days, so that cabbage we're in three days, I mean it really depends on the cabbage, again some cabbages they actually won't eat, and some they'll just go nuts on, it's, it's weird, but this one they uh, quite liked, I've seen them eat the entire thing, um, if the water's really warm, you know, 20 odd degrees, at minute it's 17. Uh, but if the water's really warm, they'll eat the entire thing, even the stalk, they can pull it to bits, and that's, uh, you know, that's that. But I always, I always have a cabbage in, because when they've eaten the main food, when, when they've eaten the thing, you'll notice that they all want to go at bottom, and they start grazing on bottom, on the moss and algae around the pond. And that's fine. But they also do the same thing with the cabbage, so when they've eaten, they'll start to graze on the cabbage, which I quite like them doing. And, uh, you know, it keeps them occupied, it's something for them to do, and occasionally, occasionally you'll just see them attacking it randomly, and uh, I've seen them, many a times I've seen them jumping on it and, you know, trying to drag it under water and that, and it, it looks fun for them, so, you know, there we go. So the next thing I've got here is uh, large freshwater shrimp. These are one of the things I've started feeding them. So they're all, these are all dried sort of foods, but the, uh, the large freshwater shrimp, I quite like these, they're all right. They're not, they're not my favorite treat. They're, they're not something they get often, like again, probably once a week. Uh, but they like them, and uh, they're not too bad. There you go, coming up for it. Um, yeah, freshwater shrimp. It's quite a nice thing to give them. Something different. I like to keep. I like to keep mixing things up. So, yeah, freshwater shrimp. They get like that once a week. Um, the next one is black soldier flies. So these are black soldier fly. I quite like black soldier fly quite a lot. They uh, they're a small thing. They don't smell bad. They don't feel bad, you know what I mean, to touch, and uh, the fish really like them as well. I'll just chuck some more in. They're going to hate this video getting fed on such stuff. But, but um, yeah, black soldier fly, they get that once a day, to be honest. They get, um, that, that's sort of my routine, I'll give them, I'll come in in the morning, but the fish feeder feeds them, I'll come in the morning, then I'll give them the food that I feed them. And then later on when they're asking for food again they'll get black soldier fly and then later on they'll get mealworm. And then 
light round that cycle again. Fish, then fish feeder or feeder, and then yeah. So then we move on to mealworm, which is kind of a really popular uh, thing for koi. Now a lot of people don't seem to like mealworm. I've quite I've talked to quite a few people that don't like mealworms. So you know they are hollow. You know they're not not much to them. It's just a casing really, but it's a dry it's a dried food and that they don't. You know, they're not swimming about, not swimming about, they're not riddling about, um, but that's not, that's not what I want, I don't want things riddling about, I'm not going to feed them live ones, um, not that it'll help, not that it'd hurt them probably, it's just, I don't know, I, I, I would go, I would never feed them live things due to uh, issues with bugs and diseases and all sorts of stuff like that, uh, but there you go, so mealworms, they really like mealworms and again, as with black soldier fly, mealworms are the once a day sort of food, and uh, they really like them. As you can see, they come out. And then again, as, as well, different koi prefer different things. So some koi prefer shrimp, some koi prefer mealworms, and some koi prefer black fly. Uh, most koi seem to prefer most koi seem to like the mealworms and black fly, and that's why they get that once a day. Um, I have actually fed them mealworms that were for bird food before and they just didn't touch them at all. So I don't know what that were about but these ones are for koi and they're slightly greasy and uh, which I imagine adds to their appeal uh, makes them smell nice and that so they want them. And then again here we've got some uh, freshwater shrimp uh, but smaller stuff. So this is like, it's almost like a dust really, shrimp with a little uh, little things. But again this is a once a week thing as with other shrimp and it's quite a good food. Oops, scared of it, some strips it inside, but there you go. They like it. Yeah, I it up. And uh, yeah, I like to feed them that. I like to feed them smaller foods and they quite like it. And also this one this one's a good food for my smaller fish. So if I go over to the quarantine tank there you get this quite regular. They're a bit shy, there's only four fish in this tank. But uh, there we go. I'm not gonna wait for them to come up, but yeah, they get that. They get that more than once a week because it's a smaller food and more appropriate for them. But they also get they also get soldier flies and mealworms. So here we are with the final bucket that I've got. This is Daphne. Uh, Daphne is not something I really feed to my bigger koi very often. Um, in fact, I'd say I don't really feed it to my bigger koi, to be honest. Uh, it's too small, I mean, you can put a bit in like that and you just sort of see it spreading across the surface. And uh, they're interested in it slightly. Not, not as interested in the uh, wee other things, but they'll, they'll pick at it. Uh, it's mainly for smaller koi. Um, and frying that, it's quite handy for. I know a lot of people that do feed it to the fish, but mine don't seem to be that interested in it. Uh, probably because I give them so many other treats. Uh, but yeah, that's Daphnia. Um, that, that's dried Daphnia. So this is another thing I like to feed them as well. Uh, they probably get this once a day, and it is Cheerios. Just regular cereal. Um, you can eat it, you know, it's get it from any shop, it's just uh, cereal, any yeah, little Cheerios. I frequently give an handful to the fish and then I'll eat an handful of it. I think that's the reason why I buy it really, but there we go. Um, the fish really like it, as you can see. Don't quite know how healthy it is from, it's just a different, it's changed. They're all the honey, honey coated Cheerios. Um, I guess it gives them, it just gives them something else to do. Else to try. There they are, attack, attacking that orange that I put in. Really good. But, I have some more food for them. <laughs> should cheer them up. What have we got now is mussels. So these are uh, just like frozen mussels, and uh, what we've done is cut them up into little pieces. You don't have to cut them up. Uh, it's just a little bit easier for the smaller fish in here. For them. Uh, but even the smaller fish can eat a full one. Uh, I just prefer to cut them up. It slows them down a bit. 
make, you know, it, spread, it spreads them out a bit more and you don't get one fish that's a bit, you don't get one big fish that eats like five full mussels. Um, they have to sort of spread it out, but they absolutely love mussels. If you want to train your fish to hand feed, mussels are definitely a good thing. If you, if you want your fish to hand feed, they will definitely hand feed mussels. They absolutely love them. Even shyest fish will come up for mussels. And uh, yeah, there you go. Some, some happy fish there. But, uh, yeah, mussels are definitely one of the favourite food, and uh, I love guinea too. Yeah, very very happy when you get mussels. Usually just put the whole dish in. There we go. There you go. Mussels sink as well, so they start making their way to the bottom. I think Oaks and Sturgeon likes them as well, so put Sturgeon in here. And you can see them all sinking down to the bottom. Fish all chasing them. Not many actually make it to the bottom. <laughs> they all get eaten. But some do. Uh, yeah. So that's mussels. Uh, you know, I think mussels are definitely one of the most um, popular foods for the fish that uh, I feed them. I think they also like. Uh, you can see the sturgeon down there. Uh, they also like um, prawns, but I don't feed prawns very often. They usually get prawns around Christmas when I get prawns. Um, but uh, mussels are quite cheap and easy to get on, and so they get a lot of mussels. But yeah, they get they get fed mussels like once a week, something like that. Maybe once, maybe once a fortnight. Um, but yeah, it's definitely. Uh, a treat that they all appreciate. So it's night time now, it's end of day and as you can see right there or next to the bottom drain, the fish move, the um, yeah just there, that, that's one of the oranges, well half of the orange that I put in today and here's the other half, as you can see they've hollowed it out and, and that. They have started nibbling at the skin if you look, so they took chunks out of the skin and uh, with a bit, bit more time they'll wear more of it away. I've never seen them eat this bit. That usually ends up going, going down bottom drain to feed that much. And then uh, I have to take it out at a uh, drum filter. But yeah, so that's what you get left when you give them an orange. And this sinks, which is quite irritating, but you know, I'll just, net it. I'll just have to net it out now. Right, so I'm just going to net that orange on the bottom. There you go. See it, but there we go. Well, it's that easy to catch fish. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you can there you go. That's what left of that orange that they've eaten. They've eaten most of its skin as well on that one. Went went a bit mad with it. So uh, yeah, yeah, just get that left. So yeah, they enjoyed the oranges. So here we are with the cabbage. Uh, one of the things I like to have in all times, you can see, it's just a uh, British Savoy cabbage. And uh, they're the ones that I get for it. Don't really do out with it, just chuck it in really. Um, you can wash it if you want, uh, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. And just push them in, chuck them in, and they'll pick at it slowly. Uh, you can see it's daylight, so I'll come back tonight and show you um, how much they better pick at it. But uh, yeah, there you go, cabbage. So here we are with the last treat that I give them. And it is pearl barley. So this is like pearl barley from like Morrison's and that. 
but this one is from Morrison's and uh, it's a really cheap treat and I really like it and enjoy it so what I'll do with this is I just fill uh, this cup off, off the, from the thermos and uh, fill it up with that pour them in here and then what I do is I fill this most at way to most at way with boiling water about three quarters at way with boiling water and then uh, when you come to it in the morning that a cup full of pale barley that just sat in the bottom is now up here and filled the whole thing up because it expands and then you end up with this that's not that's about half in it because they've already eaten half in it I give them half in the morning and half in the afternoon and uh, that's what you end up with so I'll just leave that overnight to uh, soak and then once in the morning I'll just pour them all into that and then let the uh, water drain out and out drain and once it's drained out I can eat fish. Uh, this is a sinking food, it sinks and uh, which is uh, good for fish because it stops them from splashing me <laughs> and uh, it's also the sturgeon really likes it as well. All, all fish seem to like it. It's one of the cheapest foods that you can buy for fish and they'll really thank you for buying it because they love it. And uh, there you go, you can see them all at the bottom. As with, as with any food though, you get some fish that uh, do prefer different types of food than that to pill barley because it is a cheaper food. But so, well, most of, most fish love pearl barley. As you can see, they're all down there now on bottom. Eating it away. You got sturgeon there, look. It's a good shot at sturgeon for a change. There you go then, that's, that's it for me uh, koi treats. Uh, the final thing to show you would be the cabbage. Uh, so that's what's left at cabbage after about 24 hours in the water. A good 24 hours in the water. Um, yeah, pretty much eaten most and all, all this easy to get stuff's all gone. And uh, now it's just left the uh, stronger stuff, but they'll still eat it. They'll eat it till it's just a stump, and I'll probably leave it in for another day and uh, and take it out. Cause you, don't want it. you don't want to be in there too long; it'll just go horrible. But uh, there you go. Any comments or questions? Drop them below. Thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one.